Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Phil, welcome to Phil's Computer Lab and today we're having a look at some more 486 stuff. So in the last two videos we had a look at the 486DX33 and then the DX266 and a couple of you requested uh, the Intel DX4 and also the Pentium Overdrive. So we've got these two Overdrive chips right here. Now the BioStar motherboard I'm using uh, has a Visa local bus and it's not a very fast motherboard. So it, it represents a fairly average motherboard. So one of the questions will be does it, have, does it make sense to use uh, these fast chips in such a motherboard? And uh, what kind of boost are we getting? These chips are both overdrive chips. So you can see it here, it says here the overdrive. And with the pod that stands for Pentium Overdrive and you can also see the overdrive label, label here. These chips are meant to be used for upgrading older computers. Um, you can see they both have uh, a board here and there's a voltage regulator which down converts the 5 volts to around uh, 3. 3 volts which is safe for the processor so here's the same thing we can see some uh, electronics circuitry around here there's the voltage regulator and it's got its own little passive cooler so these are uh, drop-in chips that should work with most 486 motherboards one little issue I had was the support with the cache the motherboard has 256 kilobytes of cache which worked with the 486DX33 and with the DX266, however, on these two chips the machine would not boot, it would hang straight after the memory test and before it would boot uh, into DOS. However, configuring the motherboard for 128 kilobytes of cache, these chips uh, did suddenly work. So I completed all the benchmarks with 128 kilobyte cache. There's a bit of a speed difference, a couple of percentages, but it's not, it's not uh, massive. Okay, let's have a look at some benchmark results. Here we can see all the 3D benchmarks and we can see the huge jump in performance going from the DX33 to the DX266. However, the Intel DX4 and the Pentium Overdrive, they don't really get that much faster. Yes, we are seeing a performance boost, but it's not really significant. And um, what's going on here is simply the motherboard, the BIOS, the chipset, they are not that great and not tuned for these uh, CPUs. So you will get a performance boost, but it's not nearly the kind of performance you're gonna get on a fast Visa Local Bus motherboard with a decent chipset or one of the uh, late PCI chipset motherboards. The Pentium Overdrive has a much stronger floating point unit and that explains why the Quake result is a little bit better than the other results. Still, on this machine, it's still not really uh, playable. Looking at the pure CPU benchmarks, we can see a bit more of a scaling. So if you did any computational stuff, like spreadsheets or whatever on this machine, you would see more of a boost um, than with games. But still, the performance is also uh, held back by the uh, chipset and just the motherboard being a little bit average. So there you have it guys, that sums up the video. We had a look at the benchmarks and what these chips can do. With the overdrive chips, they are meant to be used on machines that are not directly uh, compatible. If you have a machine that is directly compatible, you can just use uh, a standard Intel DX4 chip. This one needs a motherboard that supports 3.3 voltages and also pay attention there are several versions there's an enhanced version which has uh, 16 kilobytes of write back cache so at some point i want to look into that whole uh, cache thing what the differences are and and should you bother getting uh, like 512 kilobyte of cache and things like that and is it worth hunting down a cpu with write back cache because they're a little bit harder to find and a little bit more expensive but the bottom line is that the performance is limited if you're using an older motherboard or one that doesn't perform that fast with a DX266. So um, the best thing to do is just co compare benchmarks of your machine with other machines out there. And if your machine is average, then I probably wouldn't be using these chips. It's a bit of a shame because you, you, will, lose, uh, you, you will lose performance and you're not getting the best out of these chips. So 
oh, I would reserve these chips for uh, a more decent motherboard to begin with. And that's it. As always, let me know what you think, any comments, feedbacks down below, and I'll see you soon in another video.